In every esport under the sun, there are selections that are considered, let's say, low tier. And I, I don't know if anyone is gonna disagree with me here. Just what were they thinking with this guy? Only the bravest, most honorable, and most honest of souls are able to muster up the courage to not only give such selections a try, but main them in the highest levels of play. You cannot activate here if you're Mono. Just away from the EX. Mono needs this. The oh! jump is for Mono as he takes his upper punch and solidifies his spot in Grand Finals winner's side. His country's popping up. And in the cartoonish, rainbow-filled corridors of Valorante, where Riot has been known to allow agents of lesser strength to be forgotten, there is one streamer who is quite literally leading the charge when it comes to glorifying one of the game's trolliest agents. I feel so bad for that chamber. <gasps> Meet Alexander Shiro Rodriguez, a meta-neglecting renegade whose dream was to become Valorant's de facto neon main on Twitch. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh my god. So, what made a once-aspiring Fortnite and Smash Bros competitor want to play Valorant like it's Apex Legends? What reasons outside of his control caused him to abandon the games where he wanted to make his name initially? And why on earth did he choose to build his entire brand around what many consider to be one of the game's worst agents? Bro, stop bullying my neighbors. <laughs> I keep doing it! Okay, so, you know the drill. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Also, if you are another one of these crazy, low-tier, loving psychopaths who we can make another million view Valorant video about, make sure to DM me. Because we're, uh, we're running out of one tricks to exploit. All right, so before he began terrorizing the Valorant community with his neon sliding shenanigans, where exactly did this chill 20-year-old content creator come from? Well, Shiro was born and raised in Southern California, and with a Mexican father and Nicaraguan mother, it didn't take long for him and his brothers to get enrolled into soccer. I wasn't like actually in like one of those like crazy leagues. It was just one of those like, you know, little kid leagues and then I eventually I started getting better and better and there was like people that wanted to like grab me for teams but I got into gaming and I just said I didn't want to do that I didn't want to play soccer anymore growing up with two older brothers video games were always easily accessible for Shiro he and his siblings spent countless hours playing Mario Strikers and Super Smash Brothers Melee together giving Shiro his first taste of competition Lord knows, he loved it. When the Xbox 360 released, he eventually found himself playing shooters like Call of Duty and Halo. But when he caught his brother playing League of Legends one afternoon, young Shiro decided to make the move from console to PC. Like most newcomers to League, he had absolutely no idea what he was doing. He kept playing, of course, and like most experienced League players, continued to have absolutely no idea what he was doing. All right, I swear, I'm done. To be fair, Shiro was actually really good. His only unforgivable sin was that he was a filthy Yasuo main. I'd actually just run it down. Like, I didn't care about, I didn't care about learning the game. I just 
I was just nuts mechanically on Yasuo. I just run it down and fight everyone. After he grew tired of ruining people's mentals in League, Shiro dumped MOBAs altogether and joined his friends who were hooked on CSGO. But right as he was starting to climb the ranks, Valve dropped the R8 update in December of 2015. Many players noticed massive dips in their game's performance, and unfortunately, Shiro was among those affected. I got into CSGO, and, I'll, and that, that's where I was like really having fun with my friends. I got up to LEM, but then like CSGO came out with this update that just, the PC I had at the time was so bad. I got like 10 frames in a smoke and I had to stop playing CS. But as fate would have it, right as Shiro's counter-striking days were coming to an unfortunate end, a new game launched that would soon scratch his competitive itch. An elite international task force charged with ending the war and restoring liberty to all nations. Overwatch. But Overwatch wasn't just a competitive outlet for Shiro. It was a content-driven one. He enjoyed playing it so much that it inspired both him and his friend Kyo to dip their toes into streaming. Shiro had been a longtime fan of both Mango and Tyler1, so at every given opportunity, he tried to follow in their footsteps on Twitch. I'd get on my brother's PC before he'd get home from like school or work and I'd just stream however long he, I could and he'd get home and he'd be like, all right, Alex, get off. Come on. And then and then I'd, I'd get off. But I just love streaming. I don't know. I'd, I'd get zero viewers, but I just have so much fun just, just thinking about streaming. But when Shiro wasn't able to get on his brother's PC, he was still committing a lot of his time to playing Melee. He even considered going pro, but with so many obstacles in his way, he opted to focus his attention instead on streaming. We're not even there. It was fast. Yeah, you got touched though. You got oh! Touch. Holy oh, shit! Oh, he did it! Now, while Shiro's affinity and enthusiasm for streaming was steadily on the rise, the same couldn't exactly be said for that of his parents. And my dad, you know, he, he thought I was wasting my time playing video games. Like every time he'd see me on, he'd just be like, oh, you're wasting your time playing video games. I mean, it makes sense having two immigrant parents. They're not going to know what streaming is or what it could do. And they're still old school. You got to go to school. You got to uh, get a degree. You got to get a job. Despite the lack of optimism at home about his Twitch career, Shiro kept at it because he truly believed that one day, he could make it big. But once again, right as Shiro was building momentum in a game he genuinely adored, fate intervened. You see, Shiro had been streaming Overwatch for years as a Tracer main. But when Blizzard introduced Brigitta in March of 2018, a move that essentially ruined the game for DPS players, he decided that once again, it was time to move on. Fortunately for Shiro, at that time, the streaming world was being taken over by a battle royale craze. But the one that caught his attention the most was Fortnite. Fortnite was a perfect fit for Shiro. It was fun, streamer-friendly, but also mechanically demanding enough that it could catch and keep the attention of such a cracked e-gamer. <gasps> oh, ho, ho, dude, that was clean. All right, this for you, Ditsy. What the f but beyond the highlights that he was regularly able to produce playing Fortnite, the game also gave him a taste of one of the great perks of being a self-employed content creator. A paycheck. Yeah, once I started making that money from Fortnite and the stream revenue came in, it was like a hundred something bucks at the time, but I was in high school making money from gaming. I was like, dude, like this is sick. Like all my friends would be like, Dude, you're putting so many hours into that. You're only getting 100 bucks. I'm like, dude, it's, it's so fun. Fortnite also offered Shiro a competitive scene to test his skills against some of the best players in the world, which was something that had always interested him. But while he was able to hit top 50 in qualifiers for the Fortnite World Cup on multiple occasions, every time he came close to qualifying for the main event, he would choke. 
Of course, that didn't matter, because unfortunately for Shiro, Epic Games eventually decided that it was time to add mechs to Fortnite. Shockwave, shockwave. Alright, shockwave, shockwave. Wait for me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my yeah. god, dude. There's no way! This is literally in the game? Now, if you've been paying attention up until this point, you've probably noticed that there's sort of a trend with Shiro. The dude falls in love with the game, throws himself into it, and then watches as it essentially gets ruined by the developers. But in April of 2020, when Riot Games released the beta for its much-anticipated attack shooter, Valorant, Shiro saw an opportunity and dived in immediately. With gun mechanics that paralleled Counter-Strike and agent abilities that pulled from both Overwatch and League of Legends, Valorant was the perfect blend of some of Shiro's favorite games from his teenage years. Shiro took to Valorant like a duck to water. And while he initially entertained the idea of going pro, once his viewership started to ramp up, he decided against it. There's nothing better than competing for me. Like I love competing, but the thing is, is that if I actually wanted to compete and go pro, I'd have to drop like so much stream and content creation time. And it's just not, it's just not worth it because I've already built up to this point. But in an effort to keep his content unique, Shiro decided that if he was going to play Valorant, he was only gonna play the agents that were widely considered to be awful. And it may come as a surprise to many of you who weren't around back in the closed beta, but back then, Jet was actually considered to be one of those agents. Although you wouldn't have guessed it watching Shiro play her. Oh. I'm the best in the world? From that point on, Shiro made it his mission to only main the game's shittiest agents. He moved from Jet to Yoru, then briefly tried Chamber before realizing that he was way, way too overpowered for him. It wasn't until January of 2022 that Shiro finally found the trash tier agent that he would eventually build his entire brand around. Welcome, Neon. We are thankful that your path has led you here. Now, when Neon came out, the general consensus was that she was just another weak agent. But with her sprinting and sliding ability, she was unique and offered plenty of outplay potential. So Shiro was determined to learn everything he could about her. I always just play whatever fits my playstyle, whatever I enjoy playing. In every game, I've picked a character that's like fast paced, if that makes sense. And Neon was just exactly that. Seconds Hand left. off my game. Yeah, he, I think he went to main. There's no way. <laughs> no way. No way. Thanks to Shiro's unholy matrimony with Neon, his Twitch and YouTube channels began to see a noticeable bump in traffic. And his audience wasn't just returning because he was challenging people's perception of the agent. They were coming back because of him. After years of tirelessly sowing his streaming seeds, Shiro was finally starting to enjoy a taste of the success he had dreamed of all along. But with that triumph came a difficult decision. You see, at the time, Shiro was attending California State University Fullerton for a visual arts degree, and he was already set to start his third year of the program. Drawing and digital art had always been one of his hobbies, but becoming a full-time streamer was his dream. So he decided to take a semester off of college to pursue it. With his immediate future decided, Shiro continued to grind away with Neon to prove that she was viable in Ranked. Convincing his teammates that he wasn't just trolling, though, was a different kind of challenge. I think, I think he was locking Neon before, like a lot of people were locking Neon, and I was just like, 
why is there a neon in my game <laughs> like what does this mean like what 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 am i playing today well what is this game gonna be you know it's definitely not gonna be normal the the trash agents where people are like dude you're throwing playing this character and then and just making them seem so good and then and then shutting everyone up it's just so fun holy f jarso holy get a baby oh but while Shiro was trying to get some respect put on Neon's name in matchmaking, Optic Gaming was furthering that effort at Valorant Masters in Reykjavik. Not many agents can make space and play such a hyper-aggressive playstyle the way that Neon can. And Optic's willingness to incorporate her into their play was a huge reason why they were able to take home the Masters 1 title. Seeing Neon in pro play was like... Dude, everyone's gonna start playing Neon now. <laughs> like that was my first thought. I didn't, I didn't really care, but it was, it was really cool to see what those guys are doing on Neon. Like they're taking it to the highest level of the game. And and I was, I was watching like Victor, some of the sight takes he would do. I was like, dude, like I do the same stuff. Like that's why Neon is so good. And he's, he's stunning whole sights and taking with his wall and just creating so much space. There's no way people are still gonna think Neon's a bad agent now. And it's it's gone a lot better for me. I, I don't really get flamed as much for picking Neon. It's like people actually acknowledge her as a good pick now in the highest level. And while it was nice seeing Neon up on the big stage, it did sort of screw Shiro over. Because almost immediately after the event, Riot pushed some Neon nerfs that nobody really expected to see. Changes that made her energy drain much faster and caused her wall to no longer do any sort of damage. And considering most of the community regarded her as a low tier to begin with, people were sort of confused as to why Riot would opt to nerf her. Especially Shiro. It was it, it just felt so weird to wake up to Neon nerfs. She just feels pretty weak in certain scenarios where, like I said, like she was strong before, like I used to throw a wall and be able to stall pushes because they were scared of the wall damage. It was a great utility to do damage to people and to just like put fear into swinging her wall as well. Like imagine you're one HP and you swing a wall. Now you can like get three people out of it if you're like, you just, if you're just crazy enough. Despite the nerfs, Shiro continued to prove that this slippery Apex Legends looking agent does in fact have a place within a slow, methodical tack shooter. She's still the only agent he plays, and his growth on Twitch is in large part thanks to his mastery of her. A mastery that he has since shared with his audience on YouTube in the form of a pretty comprehensive guide. But luckily for Shiro, Riot recently decided to show some love to Neon adding a three times multiplier to her headshots while using her ultimate. Dude, that headshot multiplier is so crazy. Yesterday I hopped on, I popped my ult, and I, like basically one click, like one tap people. It's crazy, I love it. It's It makes her so much more skillful and it makes her ult actually like viable in, uh, in these high elo lobbies. At the end of the day, there's no denying that Shiro's path towards becoming a full-time content creator hasn't always been clear-cut. But through circumstances outside of his own control, he's found his calling with not only Valorant, but an agent that nobody could have cared less about. And thanks to Neon and his own determination to play the game the way he wants, Shiro is finally able to pursue his dreams one colorful chaotic slide at a time there's something about streaming i've always enjoyed that, and then there's always been this belief in myself that i could i could do it like I, I don't know i just it's been what five years now and there's been a surge of success that i've had and still it's nowhere near what i'm probably gonna be at like i i just think i'm gonna keep growing I made a great joke here and Miles cut it. It cuts to me being on the on cam being like, wait, shouldn't I say football? 
so we don't piss off the European fans. And then we do a, and then we do, and no, no no and then we do a punch in and I go oh wait a minute there are no European fans watching a Valorant video <laughs> what, am I, what am I saying <laughs> no need. <laughs>